good morning students we are familiar with the word spectroscopy isn't it what is meant by spectroscopy yeah interaction of spectroscopy is the study of interaction of electromagnetic radiation with the matter okay there are different kinds of spectroscopy depending upon nature of interaction between electromagnetic radiation and the matter can you give some kinds of spectroscopy from boys very good and so on yes depending upon the nature of interaction we can divide the spectroscopy into uv spectroscopy uv visible spectroscopy atomic spectroscopy vibrational spectroscopy rotational spectroscopy and so on now we are going to study about vibrational spectroscopy r ir infrared spectroscopy okay then what is meant by infrared spectroscopy In infrared spectroscopy is the study of is a type of spectroscopy which deals with the interaction of ir radiation with the matter okay then here first let us see about what are the region of infrared spectroscopy here the infrared regions are divided into three categories near infrared far in mid infrared region and far infrared region okay then the wavelength from 1012820 cm to 4000 cm um, up to 4000 cm is called as a near infrared infrared region then from 4000 to 400 cm minus 1 region is called as mid infrared region then from 4 400 cm to 33 cm minus 1 region is called as far infrared region okay okay when the ir infrared radiation during the transition it can have also rotational motion as well as vibrational motion okay here we are going to concentrate only on pure vibrational motion of a molecule okay then what are the different types of vibrational motion what are the possible vibrational motions are uh, taking place inside the nucleus it depends upon the number of atoms present in the molecule there are here i list out different vibrational possible modes of vibration symmetric stretching asymmetric stretching waving rocking twisting scissoring and so on okay then then next we calculate the possible modes of vibrational motion in a molecule from degrees of freedom what is meant by degrees of freedom degrees of freedom is the is nothing but number of coordinates required to represent the position of a particle in a system the simplest system is a coordinate system a cartesian coordinate system isn't it suppose a particle is moving in a three dimensional space the required degrees of freedom the three coord the required coordinates are three so the degrees of freedom is three okay suppose if a molecule contains n number of molecules then degrees of freedom is equal to 3n then the possible motions are translational motion rotational motion vibrational motion is equal to 3n okay suppose if the molecules are arranged linearly then that possible translation motions are 3 then the possible rotation motions are 2 plus vibrational motion is going to be found uh, found out therefore the um, for a linear molecule the possible vibrational motions are 3 plus 2 5 3n minus 5 suppose if the molecules are arranged non linearly the possible vibrational motions are 3n minus 6 n is the number of atoms present in the molecule now we are going to study about vibrational energy of a diatomic molecule diatomic molecule means it consists of two atoms so number of it is uh, the diatomic molecule means number of atoms is equal to 2 they are arranged linearly so the possible vibrational motions are 3n minus 5 put n equal to 2 3 into 2 6 6 minus 5 1 so in a diatomic molecule the possible vibrational motions are mo motion is only 1 it is nothing but symmetric stretching 
Sunit. Symmetric stretching is taking place in the diatomic molecule. Okay. Next, we are going to calculate vibrational energy of a diatomic molecule. Okay. When the, the external IR radiation is given to the matter, diatomic molecule, the diatomic molecule starts to rotate as well as starts to vibrate, isn't it? And also make a transition from lower energy state to a higher uh, vibrational energy state, isn't it? Okay. Then here the interaction is taken place only one, if and only if the molecule uh, possess the important condition for obtaining the external IR radiation is the molecule should possess some oscillating dipole moment. Otherwise, it can't interact with an external radiation. Then, the homonuclear molecules, symmetric kind of molecules do not have uh, oscillating dipole moment. So, those molecules can't produce IR spectra because they are not able to interact with an external IR radiation. Only heterokine molecules are going to interact with the external IR radiation so that it can produce IR spectra. Okay. Here let us consider one heterokind diatomic molecule. Hetero means different, it consists of different kinds of atoms H and Cl. Here uh, let us consider one diatomic molecule of mass M1, M2. They are separated by small distance R. Okay. Then when this diatomic molecule is given with an external IR radiation, it starts to vibrate. The vibrational motion in a diatomic molecule is nothing but symmetric stretching. It is undergoing two and four oscillation. Okay. Then the reduced mass of the system is calculated as mu equal to m1 plus m2 divided by m1 plus m2. Here, let us assume that the atom of a molecule uh, undergoing simple harmonic motion. Okay. Therefore, it obeys Hooke's law. What is what is, uh, can you define a uh, Hooke's law? Anybody? Hooke's law. Within the elastic limit, stress is directly proportional to strain. So, apply Hooke's law, F equal to minus Kx. Then, F is equal to, also equal to Ma, mu into d squared x by dt squared. By equating those two equations, we will get simple or a differential, one differential equation. Okay, then omega squared is taken as k by mu. From this omega, we can calculate frequency. Omega equal to 2 pi f. From this f equal to 1 by 2 pi root of k by mu. K is force constant, mu is the reduced mass. So, the frequency of vibration of a diatomic molecule is given by f equal to 1 by 2 pi root of k by mu. Then, the solution of this simple differential equation is x is equal to a sine omega t. Okay. Then next, our aim is to determine vibrational energy, isn't it? In order to determine uh, vibrational energy, I am going to use Schrodinger wave equation, isn't it? This is a Schrodinger wave equation. In this equation, V is the potential energy, E is the total energy. Then next, we are going to find out potential energy. Okay. Then, we know that one um, relation, force is equal to minus GV by negative space derivative of potential. Equating this equation with uh, Hooke's law, then rearranging and integrating, we will get V equal to half K. This is nothing but equation of parabola. Okay. Then, if we draw a graph between potential and displacement x, we will get a parabola like this. This is a symmetric one. This is a symmetric one. Okay. Then, by substituting back this potential into the, in the Schrodinger wave equation and solving, we will get the vibrational energy En is equal to N plus half H nu in joule. N is the uh, vibrational quantum number, it takes the values from 0, 1 to up to etc. Okay. N equals 0 is a ground state. By substituting N equal to uh, 
uh, zero, we will get ground state energy. That is called as a zero point energy. Put n equal to zero, half h nu. Okay. Suppose you want to calculate um, the first excited vibrational energy in the excited state, put n equal to 1. 1 plus half 3 by 2 h nu and so on. Okay. Then here all the energy levels are equally spaced. What is the energy of ground state? Half h nu. It is called as a zero point energy. The first excited state energy is 3 by 2 h nu. The second excited state is 5 by 2 h nu. What is the difference? Half h nu minus 3 by 2 h nu by half h nu h nu. 5 by 2 h nu by uh, 3 by 2 h nu h nu. So all the energy levels are equally spaced. Okay. Okay. Then applying the selection rule. Applying the selection rule. Delta n is equal to uh, plus 1. Delta n is the difference between the two vibrational energy state is equal to plus 1. By applying this selection rule to equation, this equation, we will get a spectral line. Applying delta n equal to plus 1 means the transition to, uh, uh, should take place between the two adjacent energy level. Here n equal to 1, this is n equal to 0. Delta n difference between the two energy state, 1 minus 0 plus 1 or the molecule make a transition from 1 state to n equal to 1 state to n equal to 2 state. n equal to 2 minus n equal to 1 delta n equal to plus 1. Okay. During this transition we will get some spectral lines, vibrational spectral lines. All the vibrational spectral lines are having equal frequency. Okay. Here the vibrational energy is half h nu and get 3 by 2 h nu. Difference is h nu, h nu, h nu, h nu. All the spectral lines are having equal frequency, same frequency. Okay. Here liquids only produce pure vibrational spectra because interaction between the molecules um, neglect the rotational motion. Normally when the given molecule is given with an external IR radiation, the molecule make a rotational motion as well as vibrational motion. Therefore, we will get rotational vibrational spectra. But pure vibrational spectra is obtained in a, from a liquid state. Okay. Then, next let us see about vibrational energy of an harmonic oscillator. Up to now, we have studied about vibrational energy of a diatomic molecule which undergoing harmonic oscillational motion. Okay. Normally, real molecules do not obey Hooke's law. Real molecules do not exhibit simple harmonic motion. It undergoes an harmonic oscillation. Okay. Then, therefore, the potential of a ion harmonic oscillator is not a symmetric one, it is an asymmetric one. The curve is an asymmetric one. In a harmonic oscillator, the potential curve is a parabola, symmetric one. All the energy levels are equally spaced. But here, in an anharmonic oscillator, the motion is a, not a harmonic one. So the potential energy curve is not a symmetric one. Okay, then the potential function is given by PM mass. So this uh, potential, here the potential is potential energy equal to half kx square. Here the potential energy is given by PM mass function that is equal to dE 1 minus e power ARE minus R. Okay, then here by substituting this potential energy in the Schrodinger wave equation and by solving by using perturbation method we will get vibrational energy of an anharmonic oscillator. Okay. Here nu e bar is the equilibrium oscillation frequency x is the anharmonicity constant. The, here the selection rule is delta n equal to plus r minus 1 plus r minus 2 plus r minus. Okay. By applying this selection rule to the equation 1 we will get set of spectral lines. Delta n equal to plus or minus 1 gives fundamental absorption vibrational 
spectral line. Here, when we apply delta n equal to plus or minus 2, we, we will get the first overtone. Here, the transition of a molecule is taken from 0 to second energy state. 0 to 1 is a normal absorption band, fundamental absorption band. Here, the fundamental absorption band, in the, uh, the fundamental absorption band possesses high intensity. Okay, then, but the transition from 0 to 2 gives first overtone vibrational band which possesses less intensity. Okay, then by applying the selection rule delta n is equal to plus or minus 3, the transitions are taken from 0 to 3. Du uh, uh, during this transition, we will get second overtone that is spectra, vibration spectral line is called as second overtone and so on then here the first overtone the intensity of the first overtone spectral line is very very small the intensity of the second overtone is negligibly small so we can neglect the other transition that is delta n equal to plus or minus 4 plus or minus 5 and so on okay then next we calculate the frequency of those Fundamental first overtone, second overtone, vibrational spectral line. Applying this selection rule in uh, in this equation, we will get wave number of the fundamental absorption band. This is the wave number of the first hard band. This is the wave number of the second hard band and so on. Okay. Then, suppose... Normally, at room temperature, all the molecules are uh, placed in the ground state. Isn't it? Suppose, if we raise the temperature, the molecule in the ground state raise into a first energy state. Now, the population in the uh, first excited state become considerable. Then, now, the transitions are taken place from n equal to 1 state to n equal to 2 states. In a, in a absorption, fundamental absorption band and the first overtone, second overtone, the transitions are starting from n equal to 0 state, ground state. Because at room temperature, most of the atoms are placed in the ground state. Suppose if you want to make a transition from n equal to 1 state, first excited state, the molecule should be given with some external energy. So, when the molecule is heated up, heated up, the molecules in the ground state transition, make a transition into a first excited state. Then it make a transition from n equal to 1 state to n equal to second state. In those transition also, we will obtain some spectral line. That spectral line is called as hot band with very 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 small intensity this is the first hot band spectral line okay this is uh, the intensity of this first uh, hot band spectral line is very 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 small so we can neglect the second hot band third hot band and so on okay okay then what are the uses of studying ir spectroscopy what are the application of IR spectroscopy? Here, the IR spectroscopy is uh, used to determine functional group present in the molecule. To determine which kind of vibrational modes are taken place inside the molecule. To identify the bond taken existing between the two atoms, whether it is covalent or ionic or a single bond, double bond or triple bond. We can identify um, the existing bond inside the molecule by studying IR spectroscopy. Okay.